think your dog views the world? Is it an optimist or a pessimist? Basically, does it expect life to deliver the best or the worst? And how on earth can you tell? When you think about it, optimism is a pretty tricky thing to measure. Because it's not just how the animal's feeling at the moment, it's their expectation of what's going to happen next, good or bad. It's something animal behaviourists have grappled with forever. But now, in a world first, a young Australian woman has invented a machine that measures optimism. And here's its inventor, newly doctored PhD, Melissa Starling. So, this is the Optimator. It is indeed. And of course, if we have a machine like this, the thing we have to do now is test it. Abby, come, quick, come. Let's so, let's meet our volunteers. Ellie. Here's Sue with Ellie. I think that she might be optimistic. She is tenacious, oh, she's yeah. motivated. Oh. Jane with Abby. I think she's a pessimist because she will often be very hesitant, like the floors. Sometimes she'll walk on the floors and sometimes she won't walk on the floors. Chris and Lola. Absolutely an optimist. She is incredibly enthusiastic, up for things. And Daniel, who thinks he's got one of each. Atari, I think, is definitely an optimist. When a new person comes over for the first time, she'll run up to him straight away and Bailey will be very wary. So if she sees a stranger, she thinks, well, it could be bad. Yep, yep. And Atari's like, what could possibly happen? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and now Daniel's dog is about to meet the machine for the very first time. Atari, are you ready to meet the Optimator? Hmm? I think we'll take that as a yes. OK, girl, you go. Now, before we can test anything, yes. the dog has to work out what Let's the machine go. wants it to do. Target, a little bit of peanut butter encouragement. Interest. OK. So what's going on here is there's an invisible infrared beam running across here. If her nose touches over it, then that triggers the release of this milk. So we're waiting to see if she can work out the connection. What the dog has to learn is that a low tone means milk will come if they knows the trigger. So she's getting it. Oh, she's getting milk. <laughs> and a high tone means if they knows the trigger, they'll only get boring water. Now, if that's doing your head in, imagine what it's like for the poor dog. Come on, beagle brain. You can do this. I know you can. <laughs> Truth is, it takes weeks of training before these dogs will be ready for testing. Luckily, they can afford to take their time because none of these dogs actually work for a living. But what about dogs who are destined for careers? Very good. Wait. Well, this is the headquarters of Assistance Dogs Australia, training ground for an elite carter of crack professional canines. Sunshine. Our dogs are trained for people with physical disabilities, so they're the hands for their recipients, whereas guide dogs are the eyes. Good girl. Training cost $27,000 per dog, but only 50% of recruits make it. So we want to be able to increase our chances of success any way that we can. Echo, watch. Which is why when Melissa approached them to use her optimator to help assess incoming recruits, they jumped at the chance. So is it the optimists who will excel? Well, that's what I would guess. But when Melissa tracked 10 trainees for her PhD, it turned out the better suited were the mild pessimists. It really did surprise me, but then when I thought about it, it made quite a bit of sense because they have to do what they've been trained to do and nothing else. So we don't really want dogs in these roles that think that the world is their oyster and anything could be worth a shot just in case it, it pays off for them. Like, that would be a disaster with a disabled person. But there is a much bigger picture here. It goes well beyond dogs to the animals we don't often like to think about. We're talking the thorny realm of animal welfare. We know that 
animal welfare is good for animals, but the science of animal welfare, measuring what matters to the animals, is really important. We can look at an animal and speculate that it's suffering, but it's non-science. Finding a hands-off, non-blood testing means of measuring stress has been a bit of a holy grail, which is why the optometer is so exciting because it would allow any animal to reveal over time if it was becoming more optimistic or more miserable. It's proof of concept. It looks as though it's come out of Wallace and Gromit's laboratory. But in fact, it's, it shows us what's, what's possible. I can imagine a day when this sort of monitoring system is placed in every kennel, every laboratory animal house, every production animal situation, so that we can be sure that we know how the animals are faring. Let's go, come on. But all that is in the future. Right now, our pet dogs are getting ready for their crack at the optometer. Test time. OK. Now, if you remember, the dogs have learned that this tone means if I touch the trigger, I get milk, whereas this tone means if I touch the trigger, I get water, so why bother? Now, to test their optimism, the machine introduces tones in between. So basically, think of octaves on a musical scale. Top note black, bottom note white, and in between, shades of grey. If they're optimistic, they'll think it could be milk and go for the trigger. <laughs> Pessimistic, and they'll assume probably water. So, were our owner's predictions right? Results time. OK, super okay, best. So right. Ellie is a wild optimist. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were an <laughs> OK, and, and Abby, she is a pessimist. A, oh, yes. a profound pessimist. <laughs> a profound pessimist. Abby! <laughs> <Stanley. laughs> well, I can say that I've never had two dogs persist for so long without really knowing what they were doing. So I have to assume that they're reasonably optimistic. But we weren't able to test them. <laughs> is she an optimist? She is. Not an optimist, but nor is she a pessimist. She is, in fact, in the middle. That's good, I think. I don't know what that means. <laughs> good point. For a pet, what does it all mean? Well, it doesn't mean necessarily they're unhappy, simply more or less risk averse. It's not necessarily even a bad thing to have a pessimistic dog because you know, we've seen from the assistance dogs they're actually probably really easy to live with. Oh, you got that shot, didn't you? I mean, my optimistic dog is great fun and they're also quite persistent, which means it's easy to train them. The downside is that it never switches off. So, optimist or pessimist, so long as you love them for who they are, I'm optimistic all will be right in their world.